Okay, in the last video we discussed why the sum of two cubes can be written out as this, as this form right here. In this video we're going to discuss the difference of two cubes. And all, and all it's referring to is a situation where you're subtracting or finding the difference of two numbers as cubed. So x cubed minus y cubed, for example. That's just one, one of the situations we could be looking at. So what is the idea? Well, the, the formula that we're usually given in this process is to say, oh, if you're finding the difference of these two squares, here's what you do. First, you take x and then subtract y. And then you multiply that by x squared plus xy plus y squared. And the idea, of course, is that you're refactoring this expression into these one, two terms. And that seems really nasty, but the basic idea follows any situation where you're factoring. So even in a simple sense, if I was to say, take the number 24, can you rewrite that as a product of two other terms? Well, yeah, you could write 2 times 12, you could write 6 times 4, you could write a whole bunch of things. Um, here, what I'm doing really is taking an original term and rewriting it as two other terms, or the product of 2 and 12. I'm doing the same thing up here. I'm just taking this expression and rewriting it as the product of these one, two expressions right here. So that's the basic idea uh, of this formula, right? How can we rewrite this in a different way? And it's really no more complicated than, than this down here. It just looks nastier. So what do we do? Well, in this video, we're looking at why this is actually true. In other words, how do we know that this, the product of this term and this one actually equals this expression right here? And what we can do to, to show that is the same thing that we did in the last video, which is to show long multiplication. And again, long multiplication just takes two numbers and multiplies them out. So if I'm going to look at 35 times 4, right? Really what I do is I take 4 and multiply it by 5 and I get 20, carry the 2, 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2 is 14. Now what did I really do there? Well, this is really thinking of 35 in terms of, of its place values. So the 3 is 30 and the 5 is 5, so we're splitting 35 up. And 4, we can keep that as 4, but what we're doing is distributing the 4, multiplying it by 5 and then by 30, and then adding up all the pieces, right? 4 times 5 is 20, 4 times 30 is 120. We add them up and get 140. Now this long multiplication is just a short way of writing this process of splitting up and multiplying terms. So keeping this in mind, right, this is our, our basic idea, let's do long multiplication of these two factors. So what do we do? Well, let's set it up. We have x squared plus xy plus y squared times x minus y. And I'm going to start a dot over here. I don't want to write another x. That'll confuse me. So here we took 4 and multiplied it by 5 and 30. So here we're taking y and multiplying it by these three parts here. So first we have y times y squared, but I'm going to think of it as negative y. So I'm actually thinking of x minus y. Right? I'm thinking of that as x plus a negative y. And that just goes back to the idea, let's say I have 3 minus 2, x minus y. Well, that could be thought of as 3 plus negative 2. And those are the same thing, just as these are the same things. So I'm going to rewrite this. And why am I doing that? Well, I like to keep track of my negative signs. So I'm going to attach the negative to this y right here. And now I have negative y times y squared. What does that equal? Well, y squared is just y times y, and that's being multiplied by negative y. So that's negative y to the third power. And if you're confused as to why that makes sense, think of negative y as negative 1 times y. When you multiply that by y squared, multiply by another two y's, this is y cubed times negative 1. Well, that gives you negative y to the third power. So anyway, y time, negative y times y squared is negative y to the third power. Next, y times xy. That's a little bit easier. y times x times y. Well, y times y is y squared. You can multiply those first. That's the commutative property. And then we get x times y squared. Okay, 
So I'm going to write that in here, x times y squared. Oops. It's a funny viewing tool here. Reset that. So what do we get? Sorry, x, y squared. And then we have, oh, I made a mistake. It should be negative y times x, y. See, I, I lose track of those negative signs. So negative y, ultimately that becomes a negative y squared times x. It's negative x, y squared. And again, that's the y squared doesn't cancel out the negative or anything because you can think of this negative y as negative 1 times y. So it's negative 1 times y times x times y. So then we group y times y to get y squared. The x is still there. And then times negative 1 gives us negative x, y squared. That's this term. And last, we have negative y times x squared. And that just gives us negative x squared y. And I guess if you want to look at the reasoning for that, let me just erase some of this right here. Okay, get rid of this. Okay. Well, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, negative y times x squared, you can think of that as negative 1 times y times x squared. So I take y times x squared and just rewrite that as x squared y times a negative 1. That gives us negative x squared y. And now we move on to our next term. We're multiplying an x by all these three parts. So first we have x times y squared, and we can leave that as x, y squared, but the key is to put it in a spot here that allows you to cancel out. So what do we do? Well, x, y squared matches nicely with negative x, y squared. So here we get a plus x, y squared. And by matching, I mean it has the same variables, x and y, and it matches because y is to the second power in both. You can easily match algebraic terms by looking at those exponents and the variables. So next we have x times x, y. So x times x times y. Same thing, right? x times x is x squared, and then times y. Now this matches with this term over here. Notice the variables are the same and the exponents are the same. Only now it's positive. And last we have x times x squared x times x times x, and that's just x times x squared, which really equals x cubed. So plus x cubed. Okay, now what happens? Well, these two terms are opposites. Negative x squared y and positive x squared y. Cancel out. These two terms are opposites. Negative x y squared and x y squared. So they also cancel out. And here we have negative y cubed plus x cubed. Well, remember with um, addition, you can change the order without changing the sum. So these are my two terms. If I switch the order, I get x cubed plus a negative y cubed. And we can rewrite addition as subtraction. And this gives us x cubed minus y cubed. What does all this mean? Well. What we did, again, we took these two expressions, we multiplied them out, and after all the long multiplication, what do we get? We get x cubed minus y cubed. Why does that matter? Well, we're showing that these two expressions multiplied does actually equal this one right here. And it does. By multiplying them out, we get x cubed minus y cubed. Now, in, in other videos, I'm going to show how to apply this formula. And then I'm also going to talk about a picture about why this actually makes sense. It's not as obscure as it might feel. So I hope this helps.